Welcome to the Lisa Loves Stitching podcast. Um, my name is Lisa, and you can find me on Instagram as Lisa Loves Stitching, or on Ravelry um, as Lisa Loves Yarn Seventy Six. And um, welcome to my podcast. If you're a new subscriber, thank you for returning. If you're new to my channel, thank you for checking in, and I hope you'll enjoy my videos. And if you do enjoy them, please hit the subscribe button below and click the um, little bell um, icon to get notifications when I load up a new podcast. So I'm not sure which floss tube number this is. <laughs> There's going to be initially a wee bit of yarn. I um, have only been working on my, I haven't really made much more progress on my northeasterly blanket, so I won't show you that, uh, which is actually going to be a scarf. Um, but I had some yarny mail in, oh, I should say, <laughs> I had some mail that contained yarn <laughs> and it was a really nice surprise from Laura of Lola Star Creates Podcast. So thank you so much, Laura. It was such a nice surprise to get in the mail and um, cheered me up on my first week back at work and um, it's absolutely beautiful. So all of this yarn is Dingo Dye Works and it's going to be going into my northeasterly um, scarf. And she also gave me a full skein of Pixie B um, from Dingo Dye Works. And it's just beautiful greens. I, I really love green. It's one of my favorite colors, pink and green. And it's got a beautiful little Crystal Harm Star Progress Keeper. And it's 100% extra fine merino single ply, 100 grams or 380 meters of fingering superwash. Um, and it's just beautiful and soft and squishy. And I just love all of these colors. Thank you so much, Laura. So I'm thinking I'll actually make a one school, one skein shawl um, for myself because I've been wanting one for myself um, in the pattern I got from Cozy Up Knits. Um, they're a Canadian um, four sisters from Canada and they design shawls and other things so I think I'll use that pattern to um, knit myself a single skein shawl that'll be really pretty thank you and um, this is I'm not going to get all of it out but it is just beautiful and she gave me her leftover magic cake so all this is going to come into my scarf so I'm going to have a beautiful soft rainbowy scarf it's going to be beautiful thank you laura <laughs> laura's been very supportive with me <laughs> well we've been of each other um you know dealing with our own separate issues and um i've made a really valued friend in laura so thank you <laughs> and i can't wait to see you in june when we go to our um first retreat for cross, cross stitch a sampler retreat um and i've got um, I've got to get some things done so that I can um, have some new projects to start when we go to the retreat. So let's get into cross stitch. Um, so I'll show you firstly where I've got up to. You know I was really trying to get to the halfway mark um, by the Sunday after I had the podcast. Well, I almost made it, but anyway, I've now surpassed the halfway mark because I have been, this is a long weekend for us in Australia because we had Australia Day uh, yesterday, so Monday's a public holiday. Uh, I'm not really into Australia Day, but I'll enjoy the public holiday for the simple fact of, um, you know, being able to do fun stuff rather than being at work. <laughs> so this is, I think it was 32 count linen. I don't know the linen because it just come in the kit that I bought and um, it's just like a cream ecru colour and it's I've gone past and now up to a fence and then there's like here there's like a windmill going up a little embankment and another tree and that's about it so I'm past the halfway mark and I'm just loving this it's just so nice. Oh, hello Pearl. Pearl's come over. She might come close enough for me to pick her up. It was her 18th birthday on Saturday. And um, yeah, 126 in human years, I think. 
so she's an old lady. She still likes to be adventurous, don't you, Pearl? She's coming around to investigate things because Wayne's been clearing out the pantry and, um, yeah, so he's awesome because I wanted to stitch and I didn't want to do the pantry work. So that's all I've progressed on is that so far. I'll show you where actually I'm getting it from. Uh, here we go. So I bought this kit and it come with this thread but I don't want to use it for this project and I had thought that maybe one day I'd do this whole um, sampler in that thread myself but to be honest after doing all those trees oh no thank you <laughs> once is enough but I may use the other motifs later on so um, I wanted to take this scene here this bush Australian bush scene and this is Australian counter cross stitch juniper designs um, yeah it comes with 32 count linen or you can also get it with 16 count Ada if that's what you prefer and it's a Ginny Thompson flower thread and it comes with a needle and your instructions um, so yeah so they're located down in Sandown village in Victoria so I really like all the Australian motifs in there. So the reason I chose this was I'm doing a sampler for my nan's 100th anniversary, uh, 100th birthday this year in June. And she come from Bogabri, which is a town in northwestern New South Wales. And um, it's a little country town and she lived on a property and I just thought this sort of symbolised where she grew up. And I like to think of those as cockatoos flying overhead. And um, so I only bought the sampler $70 um, just for this <laughs> this chart um, I may use the native animals or something as well but we'll see so that's what I got that for and then the rest of the sampler up the top here I plan to have like a, a little curved window and it'll have um, like 100 years in it and then I'm going to put my nan's name Coral Finlay oh well yeah I don't know if I should put her maiden name or her married name anyway I'll work that out and then I'm going to put um, the family um, names in here of her siblings and parents and her husband and then some motifs that represent the adventures she's had throughout her life so that's what my plan is and I'm just going to free flow with that. I've got some graph paper to chart my own um, motifs so we'll see how I go. I might find some free ones somewhere else that I can use. Um, also I'm looking into the history of samplers because a lot of them have um, symbolic motifs that represent longevity and things like that. So I'm also maybe incorporating some of those into this so that it <laughs> it's sort of got the traditional with my own take on that so yeah so I haven't cross stitched for that long I mean I did a very small amount of it in, when I was a teenager and in my 20s um, like bookmarks very basic um, beginner stuff and then this year I took it up again and when I discovered floss tube and I just got really excited about it because I've always loved embroidery um, and I have done quite a bit of embroidery in my youth um, and I want to do more of that so yeah so that's what I'm doing so um, now I'm addicted uh, I'm getting all the gadgets and things so basically you don't need a fancy scroll flat frame that costs you know hundreds of dollars to get started so what I want to talk to you about today is what gadgets I have um, what are handy and helpful to use in cross stitch and you know what you can use to get started with so basically this is one of these inexpensive wooden hoops that you get from spotlight or your local discount um, craft store um, like Lingcraft or spotlight in Australia or Joann's in the US or Michael's and it's just got like a little screw to tighten it up now I always used to have it this way around for the front 
but you can't see where the other side of the hoop begins and you always bang your needle into it. So I saw other people doing it this way and I found it's really useful. So you just sandwich your linen or your Ada cloth into this and ideally you blanket stitch around the edge or if you've got a serger you can serge it or zigzag stitch on your sewing machine just to minimise the frame and you just sandwich your linen in here and to get it super tight like this is a bit loose at the moment to tighten it up all you're doing is instead of you your, your natural thing is to go to pull it out to get it tighter but I learnt off um, someone else on floss tube the best way to do it is to pull it up and that tightens it so if I go like that that's tightening it and you just adjust it so every now and then you might have to tighten that up and you just give it a little tug and then it gets it nice and firm so the idea of the hoop some people excuse me for rubbing my nose constantly um, some people like to stitch in hand and they prefer a stiffer fabric um, that might be like Ada cloth or like um, uh, Monaco because it's a stiffer linen. This one is particularly good here. This is from R&R um, &R Reproductions and it's a 32 count linen and it's super stiff. It sort of stands up on its own and that's really good if you want to do I've done all of this in hand this is a little house needleworks design I got in Tasmania when I was on holiday and it's um, like a little uh, sweet shop for Christmas and um, I just got this because I'd never stitched on linen and I wanted to have a go so I got a big oops I'll just put this down I got a big bit I think it's like a quarter, fat quarter or something and you can see how see-through this one is so different counts will have a different fabric so the count basically means how many stitches per inch or threads per inch um, so if you you can get Ada as an equal match for it if you prefer the ease of stitching on something that you can see the squares lined up so if I just explain sorry if you're a super duper cross stitcher and you're not a beginner but I thought I'd cater to some beginners because I know there's some out there that watch my podcast so on this I don't know if you can see there you can see it's quite obvious the little grid of squares where the thread goes so you can just put it in the holes to make your cross does that make sense <laughs> here it's a little bit harder to see so what you're doing is you're counting two threads two threads up and two threads wide to make your stitch so um, this is a little bit more difficult than using Ada cloth which you can clearly see where you got to put your needle okay um, and it's sort of like a grid pattern it doesn't matter which one you choose <laughs> whatever takes your fancy if you feel comfortable and you get enjoyment out of your craft by stitching on Ada it's no less value than linen it's just a different type of fabric it's been around since the year dot and um, it's just a different type of fabric so there's also an even weave which is similar to Ada in the fact that you can it's there's no with linen you get little natural slubs of thread so I don't know if you can see see you get thicker threads and thinner threads so um, even weave is just even threads all the way there it's that's why it's called even weave but linen like this um, has different width slubs in the thread so you just have to um, oops wait I've just got to um, save the cat from eating plastic ah, ah, ah. come on oh, oh, sorry. give it to me oops. Oops. I'm gonna need more in your mouth I'm gonna need more in your mouth 
Vai, put go. Oh. Anything crinkly. Oh my God. I'm just gonna choke on plastic. I'm normally really vigilant. Um, if you have a cat, FYI, <laughs> they go for anything crinkly, plasticky, like having a kid. So <laughs> I can't have a choking on that. So um, normally I'm very vigilant about it. I don't leave plastic bags around. I don't leave wrappers on the floor or tinsel or um, the curling ribbon um, because they'll go straight for it. <laughs> and then you've got a vet, vet bill. So, and I don't want her hurt. <laughs> So I'll just introduce you. Hello, Chloe. Oops, you all right? It's loading everywhere. Here's the birthday girl, the mischievous girl. Hello, Pearl. Getting into plastic. <laughs> all right. Hopefully she behaves. <laughs> okay, back to what I was saying. <sighs> so, linen's natural. It ate as um, oh, that's a natural of course but um, yeah linen is made from flax and um, yeah so a lot of the times you get the different thicknesses of thread so it does make it more difficult to see where you have to stitch but it's not that hard to be perfectly honest if um, and there's like I'll just tell you God, I sound so confusing. I probably like lost the beginners. They're going, what the hell? So the equivalent of this, this is 16 count Ada. And to convert this size fabric, when you're doing this stitching on, um, to get the same outcome with linen, is you double it. So 16 count is 32 count linen. Uh, 14 count Ada is 28 count in linen so if you want the same thing but you want to try linen same size stitching and everything and you want to try linen then you just double the size of the Ada cloth and take that to linen so this is 32 count um, Ada and as an example this is 32 count linen So that's that. So it doesn't really matter what you stitch on, whatever you're comfortable, you might want to try a few different fabrics um, and just see how you go. You might go, oh, I don't really like that. So the higher the count, the finer the fabric. So you'll get 40 count, which will be really t hard to see the, the um, holes to where you've got to put your crosses. And then you can have like up to 60 count or probably even higher. And um, some people even um, stitch on silk gauze, which looks amazing, but would be really hard. <laughs> um, now, gadgets, what's helpful for me is something that I'm comfortable holding. So a hoop. I tried a lap hoop and I didn't like it. It just wasn't for me. That's okay. I might use it down the track for other things, but it'd be good if you're sitting at a table. But for what I'm doing sitting on the lounge while I'm watching TV. Um, I prefer the hoop, it's lightweight, um, and I don't mind the Q-snap. So this is a Q-snap, it's PVC pipe, it is heavier than your, uh, than your little wooden hoops. And um, you can just slide these bits off and that's what sandwiches it onto the pipe. So you can change the size to suit yourself. Um, so you can buy that at Spotlight and that as well as um, any embroidery shop or online on eBay or whatever um, and also the Fox collection in Australia so um, have a good hoop that you're comfortable using and you might have to try a few um, or you might like stitching in hand you just decide what you're most comfortable with this is not about having the perfect I don't know fancy uh, scroll frame or whatever. It depends on the project you're doing and where you're doing it and how you're comfortable sitting. Um, another thing is good lighting. So you can either spend money on an Otlight like I have, 
which once I knew I really wanted to do um, cross stitch full time, um, I invested in that um, with money from my birthday. Um, it's uh, probably close to $200, but I can tell you for anything you're doing, even any other close work um, stuff, knitting, crochet, um, hand sewing, or stitching at your sewing table, you can move it around. It's quite got a heavy base so it won't fall over, but this brings up everything in pure daylight. So you see the true colour um, and you can see really easily. So I find this is really good. I can put it down low. It's got this little hood, so when I'm sitting next to Wayne, it doesn't disturb him while he's watching TV. It'll blind him. And I can quite happily still look up, watch TV, and do my stitching. Um, I will just show you this light has a magnifier which it's low but you can um, adjust the height of it to bring it up higher up here I just haven't bothered yet um, so yeah but just be, bear in mind if you have this where the wind where the oops, sorry, if you have that magnifier where the sun's hitting it through a window even just through the blinds uh, you'll see it puts a reflection on the wall or the fabric or, or your lounge or whatever <coughs> put a um, move it or put a um, pillowcase over it um, because it has been known to get so intense with the magnification on the um, sunlight that it has set fire to people's curtains and um, lounges and things so you don't want you to come home and find your house is burnt down so just before we went on holidays Wayne noticed that the light was reflecting on the wall on um, this really intensely and I just grabbed a um, I turned it to the side so it wasn't making that reflection and I put a um, pillowcase over it simple done but if you don't want to spend a fortune on um, an expensive light I just got a daylight lamp desk light for $25 from Big W it's a little telescopic one and it's perfect I can take it when I go stitching outside of home um, I can put it near my chair um, and it's inexpensive another thing is having a nice window to sit next to to do your stitching or I found sitting under at our dining table with the light above our dining table was enough to stitch at night time no problem without this light so you don't have to go to expense a great expense to get started with cross stitch okay um, you might want to start out with a simple kit from your local um, craft store um, and then once you've got the bug you might want to have a look at a needle workshop or online and um, there's some lovely counter cross stitch charts that you can purchase um, even small little ones and you can make little ornaments for Christmas or Halloween or whatever you want to do so um, yeah it's up to you and there's lots of patterns on Etsy which you can print out and just get the PDF pattern and um, yeah so have a look at floss tube although I will say it's a big enabler because <laughs> um, every time I watch it, I'm like oh my god I gotta get that pattern um, so sometimes you gotta rein yourself in <coughs> excuse me I'm just gonna have a drink okay so what other gadgets do I use? Um, did I put... Here it is. I have trouble with my vision. Looking up and then looking down and then finding the same spot. Always got in trouble as a kid at school for stuffing up my writing when I was looking at the board. But anyway, I got this online. Um, I can't remember where I got it. One of the embroidery stores online. And it's a um, chart grip and you put your chart in there you can bend it in different directions and that way when I'm stitching I can see my chart really close so I don't have to look up and down too much um, to see where I'm at rather than having to go and pick it up and have a look and then put it down it's just easy I can just quickly look up and see it as a quick reference guide when I'm stitching so that's a really good gadget and it wasn't that expensive you know less than twenty dollars so I think it was about ten dollars or something Another thing is you might want a project bag. Now your project bag when you first start out might be a glad bag that um, you can seal. 
Later on you might be a sewist and you can make your own project bag or you might want to buy one online. I purchased this from the US uh, at great expense and it's from um, made by Mama Joan but she also has a floss tube and um, I really love it. It's my favourite project bag and whatever the project is that I'm working on at the moment um, that can fit in here goes in here. So at the moment um, I take my grip off I fold my linen up and I pop my current project in there, I shove my grip in there and whoops, I put my embroidery scissors in there, needle threader, I've got my needle on my needle minder and um, yeah, so and then it just zips up, it, I can see what project's in there because it's see through and also um, it keeps my project clean when I'm transporting it or not using it. It just keeps it nice and clean. If I spill something, it can wipe off without getting onto my actual project. So that's something handy to have and you might be able to make it yourself or you might just get a pillowcase. You know, a pillowcase would do. And, um, or um, even a shopping bag or some sort of zippered, big giant zippered, um, a pencil case or just a glad bag whatever works for you and as time goes on you might want to invest in some nice project bags and um, they make me happy when I look at it when I see my project and keeps it nice and clean so that's another thing another gadget another one is a needle minder so I've got this one from um, Chapel View Crafts on Etsy and she's located in the UK and she makes beautiful stitch markers, progress keepers and needle minders and I can thoroughly recommend her. I've bought from her multiple times and the quality of her work is always exceptional. So I've got this little candy cane gingerbread house for Christmas and it's got the other magnet that goes on the back. So it's quite a, whoops, now it's just run away from me. It's quite a strong magnet and it just keeps your needles on there or you can even put um, your scissors on there or your needle threader. So I'll go and pick that up later. I'm going to crawl around on the floor at the moment. But yeah, so needle miners, you can just clip it onto your project. And also, um, in the beginning, before I got the chart grip, I used a couple of needle minders to hold my chart to my work so that I didn't have to look for it. I could just have it right there in front of me. So you might find that works for you. Now, these retail about $12, $13. Um, and whilst very beautiful, you don't have to go to that expense. So what I have done is I went to Spotlight, my big craft store. And by the way, this is my little toolkit. I got it at Woolworths. Oh, sorry, Coles. Oh no, Woolworths. I got it at Woolworths with their um, in their laundry sort of section where they have special containers and baskets. And this is their little sewing box and it comes with a little tray to put all your bits in and underneath you can store other stuff. Um, I need to tidy this up by the way, but it's really helpful when I'm traveling with my stitching and I'm going to a group meetup. Um, I've got all the things that I need there and I don't have to have it running around the bottom of my bag and I can just sit it where I'm next to me and, and use it. So if you don't have the money to buy expensive lovely handmade needle minders you can make your own so all I've done is I got some buttons from Spotlight and you can buy magnets there and I just need to get some more magnets so that I can put on like on this one is a little snowman and he's got a little tiny one on him so, um, yeah, I just got, they have different themes. It's got like a little reindeer and I've got some that's like a little dove, peace dove. Um, so, yeah, you can just get the magnets, make your own up. There's one that's a star. I mean, even the $2 shop, you know, like your discount, really discount store, like reject shop or whatever, they sell these little button things for like scrapbooking and that. Just grab them. And make up your own. Um, very inexpensive. 
Um, what else? Um, I've got fancy floss here. I'll explain that shortly. Okay. So, another thing I find handy to have if you're over 40 and or maybe you're younger, I don't know, and um, eyes aren't what they were. I've just got these cheap glasses from Spotlight or any chemist you can get them from for under five dollars and um, I just use them when I can't see and I'm usually when I'm out and about if I can't see on the close work that I'm stitching I just use that if I haven't got my big magnifier handy so that's helpful and what else I've got my beeswax which helps condition your thread so it just makes it run smoother so I just find that really helpful now another important point is threading your needle you can purchase for very little cost like a couple of dollars one of these style needle minders which you'll have seen around they're this little aluminium needle minder they're okay but I find they'll break on the first go if you're not careful because they're only just wired in and um, they'll just pull out straight away on the first go so the best way if you are stuck using these um, is to hold the base of it as you pull it through that way the wire won't come out otherwise you'll be cursing because you'll never get a th um, needle threaded especially when you're pulling two threads rather than one through the needle another thing is uh, I invested you can get other needle minders, like my mum bought me this one, which is brilliant, but it's only good for one thread at a time. Um, so it's great for hand stitching your hems if you need just one thread through the needle. But if you need two threads, especially of embroidery thread, you might want to invest in this. This is a clover threader, embroidery threader, and it costs about $17.95 and it's got a little hole through it and it goes through my needle easy peasy there's my needle so you put it through the needle like that then you put your thread your two threads through there and then you just pull it like that and then it pulls the threads through your needle the eye of your needle love it best thing i bought this year my clover needle threader i got that at all threads embroidery in norman park really love it best thing i've used it every time no problem makes my life so much happier <laughs> i just can't i just can't see the threads anymore uh, another good investment is just some inexpensive um, embroidery scissors. I got these from Spotlight. Um, under $10, maybe $8 or something, or $6. I think some of them might even be less than that. Um, where did I put it? It's always the way. I had it, and then now I haven't got it. There you go. Anyway, whatever. I had um, another needle which I was going to show you, another, god I can't talk, another pair of scissors, let me just see if I didn't put it there, no, no, okay, can't find it, let's keep moving, <laughs> or we'll never get through, um, so I did have another pair of unicorn scissors that I got from Spotlight, and then I bought a scissor fob, um, the same um, format as this, um, with a little cup of hot chocolate on it with candy cane things in it um, from Chapel View Crafts and that was really cute so that goes with that. So what am I going to show you next? Um, okay, gadgets. Okay, so now with your um, fancy floss you might start out with DMC and DMC is absolutely fine for every project you do. You just may find that some projects will quote, they usually will quote the DMC um, equivalent. 
it's not on there. Um, but yeah, they usually will quote the DMC equivalent. I think it's on the back of this one. Gosh, why do I have to put everything on the things? Okay. This one has the fancy floss with it, but it also gives you a conversion for what the floss you could use if you're just using DMC, and that's quite all right. DMC, you can wash your fabric. Uh, unless your fabric's hand dyed, just be mindful that it could run. Um, but if you're just using standard fabric, um, like Ada or whatever, um, and DMC, you won't have to worry about um, it running. It's colour fast. But sometimes you might use hand dyed um, fabric to stitch on or hand dyed um, fancy floss. So this is Classic Colour Works and this one's called um, Hickory Sticks. It's from the US. Can't really show you that. It's like a brown, variegated brown colour. And then this one is Caterpillar from Classic Colour Works. It's another brown. And then we've got. Weeks Dye Works, um, Hand Over Dyed Fibres, and this is Hazelnut. And this one is a classic colour works, and it's Steam Broccoli. So it's slightly variegated, um, whereas DMC, like, unless you buy the variegated DMC, it is a solid colour. Um, these ones, if you use these, do not wash your project. Okay. If you really feel you have to wash your project, I would do a little swatch, stitch with all the threads to see and wash it and see if it's going to run because you do not want to get your project finished and have spent hours and hours and hours working on it, only to find you put it in the wash and it's um, run and your whole project's ruined. So that would be devastating. Um, yeah, so that's... Sorry for crinkling. So that's all... Um, my key gadget advice, um, just think simple at first, because you don't know, you might not, it might not be your jam. Um, but if it is your jam, you might want to invest in some tools that are quality, that are going to give you happiness to use, that are going to save you headaches, and you're going to enjoy your projects more by using them. Um, some of the lovely um, cross stitch charts um, come with the floss and the beads that you need like this one it's um, Strawberry Fields Farm by the Victoria Sampler and um, some may just come with a chart only or some you may buy as a kit and it'll come with your fabric, your floss beads, whatever, embellishments um, and the chart so this one I tried recently at All Threads Embroidery to find some green, sort of sagey, olivey green fabric to go for this project later in the year, but unfortunately I just couldn't find anything suitable, so I might have to buy online. I have found some that I'm quite happy with, but I don't want to spend the money this month, so um, later in the year I might go back and buy it, because um, I would like to do that project later in the year. And sorry for the crinkling again. I bought this at All Threads Embroidery for myself, and this is 32 count Belfast Linen Pearl Grey Fat Quarter. So, um, eight is quite inexpensive. Um, you might get it for I don't know, $10 or something, $15. Um, this one, linen's more expensive. This Fat Quarter cost nearly $30. Um, and yeah, it's just because it's a finer fabric. So it's a um, pearl grey and it's just a really nice coloured grey. And I got it to go with. Bum, ba -da -bum, bum, bum. Where did my chart go? I just put it down because I was showing you right there. So this one that I got the fancy floss for is called Old White Farmhouse Sampler by Stacey Nash Primitives. And. Um, I wanted to get the, I've already got the floss, so I wanted to get the fabric to go with it, and I think this matches perfectly. And I think these threads will look lovely on it. So um, that's kitted up now. Um, so when you hear kitted, that means you're ready to go. It's, you've got your fabric, your floss, any embellishments, and your chart. Um, so that's ready to go, and I'll probably start that at the June retreat. Um, I'll probably take that to start. 
So that's that one. So I'm glad I've got that kitted up. And I wanted to get the fabric for this one so I could take both of them to start both. But anyway, we'll see what happens. Um, I got this book recently, Cross Stitcher. It's from the UK. I basically bought it for all these little motifs for Christmas that you could do as an advent calendar or make in, cut um, out to make into little mini ornaments um, or you could use them for cards. There's even an advent pillow where you can put the numbers on there and just move it round the ribbon round um, as the days go on for leading up to Christmas which I thought was a cute idea. Even these ones you can make little name cards for people at the table and yeah I had Oh, this was cute. Where is it? Where's the way? I just found it and then lost the page. This little wall hanging for the lead up to Christmas is cute. And all these basically use DMC. And oh, I like these little mason jars with Christmas things in. I thought that was cute. So I might have to do that at some stage. So I got that, and that is basically it. So I hope I haven't confused you too much if you're a beginner. I didn't really plan, I never really plan these things. But Laura mentioned that she wanted to know about the fabric and things like that, so I thought I would explain a few bits and pieces about getting started with cross stitch. And then as time goes on, you know, you can up the ante um, as you wish or keep it simple, it's up to you. Um, your craft, you do it your way. So um, if you have any questions, um, please put them down below, comment below, and I'd be happy to answer as best as I can um, or refer you to somewhere where I know you'll find your answers if I'm not sure. Um, and that's about it. So hopefully next week um, I'll do another podcast and you'll find that I've finished that whole bottom section and then I'll be starting my... Uh, other um, motifs which I'm excited and nervous about because I'm like oh my god I've got to chart that myself <laughs> um, but fingers crossed <laughs> I can wing it um, I'm thinking to do I really want to do some lovely um, l um, wattle going down the side because my nan loves wattle um, so yeah so I'll see what I can zhuzh up um, and yeah, I don't think there'll be a lot happening because I'm mostly going to be focusing on that, but it'll be interesting to see what motifs I come up with. And till then, keep stitching, be kind to your fellow crafter, and um, I'll see you soon. Bye.